If you're camping in a van, you need to make the most of every inch of the interior. That's why it's a good idea to install a seat swivel. You gain a seat without losing any space. This is from Swivels R Us. It's a simple four corner detachment of your existing seat. This one? No, that one. And there, you take all four bolts out. Make sure you unplug the airbag sensor. Good idea to disconnect the battery first so you don't blow anything up. This is the swivel, how it comes in the box. That lays where the seat was and you put those same four bolts in the corners. You simply lift this red button to swivel it. I've already put the bolts in to the seat base. Now you replace the seat onto the swivel and put four, the original four bolts back into that. Now in a Ford Transit, this may be in your way. The seat swivel does raise the height off the base a bit, but the way it swivels when you actuate it, as such, the swivel base on the upper part may hit this metal bar. Maybe not the first click, but the second one for sure as you swivel the seat all the way around. You need to bend that down just a bit so that that can clear and doesn't scrape. Reconnect your airbag connections and replace the battery wire. Here it is swiveled all the way around. Don't go all the way around 360 because you'll twist that wire underneath and you'll have some issues with your airbags. Here it is bent down with the plastic trim back on and it still clears the plastic trim. And when you swivel it, the seat base misses that metal bar. Makes that front seat much more useful as part of the interior while you're camping. Three bolts there, three bolts there, and you're done. The wiring, that's a different story. So this is what I'm wiring in for trailer lighting in this 2015 Transit. First you've got to run a power wire, which I've already done underneath the chassis from the battery terminal up front. Then I went through here to the module which I mounted in there, it comes with sticky tape and grounded. And this is the pigtail, this plugs in between your tail light and the harness. And one wire runs up and over the top and then down this side of the pillar and out to hook up to this side, to this light. Now at the same time, I'm doing a backup camera with LED lights. I had to drill a hole in this plastic trim. Went through an existing hole. I had to take that trim off. An existing hole in the door frame, door body, and came up through here. Detached this, stretched it out straight, and fished the wires through it. It was not an easy task. And these are the what I'm wiring into the tail light because the camera triggers from the reverse light. When the reverse lights come on, the camera comes on on the mirror that came with it. So these are those power wires. These come from this pigtail. They're spliced in here, but I didn't want it inside of this, so I put it in the door. So you run the power wires through and the camera wire that goes to the mirror. I ran that up here so far and that'll go up above the headliner all the way up to the front. This is the mirror which I tested before I started to install it, make sure it worked. And it just has spring clamps on it that goes over your existing mirror. 
this is the brand of the mirror and camera all right so finished product I'm pushing the brake putting it in reverse which triggers click the power and the camera so you can do your backing safely I've got it tilted down so you can see the bumper you can just see it there on the bottom and works pretty well let's back up a little yeah I'm gonna hit the door probably about four inches away and you put it into drive turns off you've got picture setting standard soft vivid and daylight I like standard and then you can adjust the brightness the contrast the color the hue the zoom which is interesting that or the wide view I prefer that and the language and then, so there you go it was not easy to install I had to run a wire the entire length of the headliner all the way to the back and then through that harness in the door out to the license plate frame but it works so I'm installing these lights that will be connected to my house battery which is over here so I've run the wires up that pillar and across above this headliner so this is the power coming in from the battery this will jump back to the second light near the back of the van and the other one is going here I know seems redundant but I didn't want to alter any of this wiring to the van so I'm making these lights operate separately off the house battery so as not to use the van's battery at all. These are LEDs. They've got nine LEDs in each one and a handy off, off and on switch that comes through the hole in the lens after you snap this back on. So they will be completely independent of the van's power and strictly run on the AGM. As you saw, I had the wires coming up through the air duct. Well, the power one that comes from the pillar is just above the headliner and came out from underneath the air duct. I tied those together and we're good on the front one. Now we just need to do the back one. We'll be done. You may ask, how did I attach these? Going up through the headliner. There isn't a whole lot to grab onto except that air conditioning duct up above. Take this out so you can see it. it is plastic right here. So what I'm doing is once I position the light, poking a hole, there's a place for four different screw mounts. Um, just poking a hole with an awl up through the headliner and in through the plastic and then putting a screw up through the headliner and into the plastic and tightening it until there's snow. Let there be light. Oh, got to put that one back in. So those lights we can use off the house battery while camping. I know this is hard to watch, a little unnerving, but I really wanted to hook up a 110 volt shore power plug just in case we do have hookups at a campsite to be able to take advantage of the 110 power. Rather than just string an extension cord through one of the doors, which will leak water and 
all kinds of other issues. I decided to install a shore power plug on the exterior of the van. Make sure you clean all the burrs off the rough metal cut. This is a deburring tool. You gotta be very careful because that stuff, that metal is razor sharp after you cut and drill the holes. Smooth them as best you can. And here's what you end up with. Here's the plug I'm gonna be using. It originally came with only two mounting holes. I drilled two more so that it's got more of a positive contact on that gasket to the exterior of the van. Make sure you paint all exposed metal after drilling or cutting holes from the inside and the outside. This is how I taped up the outside to spray it from the inside, which is not easy to get to in this particular location, but I didn't want to put this plug too close to the gas filling tube by the driver's door. Here's the inside plug mounted to the inside panel. It also has a rubber boot that the wire goes through. So here's the outside. I don't know if you can see that, but it comes in along here on top of here. I made these with some clips, some strips of rubber and zip ties. I'm going to coil some extra behind the, the jack on the inside and this rubber cover goes over it. Coil some extra so that you can get this panel in and out and this won't hit the wall or anything. Give you a little extra. And here's what it looks like on the inside. I got an extension cord that stays pliable in cold weather and has a monitor light so you know that it's charged and you'll remember to unplug it while you're camping. This is the ISO bar, surge suppressor, and line checker. I'm gonna turn the light off again. See those green lights? Sorry. This one says line okay. This one says protection present, which means this is working. And this says fault. If you've got a bad a circuit, it's going to tell you that you've got a bad circuit. This model will keep working even if the protection gets blown. That light just wouldn't come on. They make another model that shuts down the power completely if the protection is blown. This one would still work, but at least you would know that you don't have any surge suppression. Thanks for watching. Give us a like and subscribe to the channel for more tips and tricks on van building, van life, van travel. And we'll catch you next time.